How can you freeze a person like Bucky Barnes, also known as the Winter Soldier, and not permanently damage their cells? In this video, I'm going to try and answer that question. Hi, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel, you'll find videos about the science and engineering behind some of your favorite superheroes and their superpowers. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications on the latest videos. Right, let's get into some science behind the Winter Soldier. Bucky Barnes, also known as the Winter Soldier and White Wolf, is back in the Disney Plus series Falcon and the Winter Soldier. In the series, he joins forces with Falcon, also known as Sam Wilson, to continue their adventures in the MCU after the blip. After the Thanos snap in Avengers Infinity War, both Bucky Barnes and Sam Wilson vanished from the face of the planet. But in Avengers Endgame, five years after the events of Infinity War, both Sam and Bucky, along with many other characters and billions of others in the universe, were brought back without aging a single day. In a way, you could argue that their lives had been extended by five years. But Barnes knows a lot about extending life beyond Thanos' snap. In the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Bucky reveals that he's 106 years old. How did he live for so long? Well, the answer is one word, and that is freezing. If, like me, you like staying to the end of Marvel films in the cinema to see the mid-credit and post-credit scenes, you'll be well aware of this scene, which appeared at the end of Captain America's Civil War. In the scene, we see Bucky Barnes being frozen or cryogenically preserved in Wakanda under the watchful eye of Steve Rogers and T'Challa. Now in that scene it looked like Bucky Barnes was being frozen in one of these. This is a cryo chamber and it's used as part of cryotherapy. A cryotherapy chamber can be used to relieve muscle pain, swelling or sprains after a very serious injury. Cold temperatures can minimize cell death after a lack of oxygen, can help with any discomfort after an injury, and decrease swelling. In a cryo chamber used in cryotherapy, the temperatures tend to be lower than minus 100 degrees Celsius, but you only have to step in for about three minutes, because if you stay in there for any longer, well then you could actually cause permanent cell damage. The percentage of water in the human body can vary from 45% to 75%. Thing is, when you start to decrease the temperature of water molecules, well, they start to do something a little bit peculiar. Let's take a closer look at what actually is going on when you start to freeze water molecules. Here we are with good old H2O. Yes, this is a molecule that is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. In a liquid, these molecules, well, they're free to go where they please because they're able to move around and they can move past each other. However, when you start to freeze water, it will start to form a solid and that solid will form a crystalline structure that might look something like this. And as you can see, it's a very ordered structure and the molecules are fixed to particular locations. As a result, that means that there are spaces in between the molecules that are never occupied by other water molecules, unlike in the case of the liquid where the molecules could go wherever they wanted to. This is all very bad news for cells and here's why. Imagine you have two cells in water that are surrounded by water molecules. And those water molecules are able to move around and go as they please, so the cells won't be adversely or badly affected by this. However, if you were suddenly to freeze this setting with these biological cells and the water all mixed together, well, what will happen is you will create a configuration where you have this crystalline structure of water molecules, which is ice, will have expanded and as it does so, it actually starts to compress or contract those biological cells that might happen to be nearby. In fact, the growing crystal actually borrows some of the water from those cells. This can be detrimental to those cells because 
if you were suddenly to unfreeze the cells, well, the ice crystals that will be surrounding those cells could actually pierce the membrane of the cells and burst them while permanently damaging the cells. So just freezing someone in the device used to freeze Bucky Barnes in Wakanda in Captain America Civil War would be a very bad idea. But there is another solution and it involves the introduction of cryoprotectants which will stop the formation of ice crystals in water as the temperature is brought below zero degrees Celsius. The introduction of cryoprotectants in this manner is part of a process called vitrification. In the process, the water molecules do eventually stop moving, but they don't join together to form that large crystalline solid. Lots of cryoprotectants in the body spells bad news for biological cells. Well, because cryoprotectants are poisonous. But hold on a minute. T'Challa and the Wakandan scientists, they managed to preserve Bucky Barnes without any technical issues. And Hydra had been doing it to Bucky Barnes for decades. So how were they able to do it? Well, the answer is ice binding proteins, which are non-toxic and have antifreeze properties. Now your body is making proteins all of the time. Collagen, which you'll find in your skin or hemoglobin, which is in your blood. They are examples of proteins. Wait. Ice binding proteins? How could Bucky Barnes make ice binding proteins? The 2011 film Captain America The First Adventure saw the conversion of Steve Rogers into a super soldier with super strength. But in the same film, Bucky Barnes was also subjected to a similar treatment, but one that was done by Hydra. So both Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes are super soldiers with superhuman abilities. And one of those abilities relates to how their bodies behave when they're exposed to really cold temperatures. When the temperature of their body is lowered, ice crystals do not form. The reason that they do not form is that their antifreeze proteins, these ice binding proteins, grab onto those ice crystals when they're very, very small and basically stop them from growing to be very, very large. These ice binding proteins actually do exist. There are many fish that swim in Antarctica or the Arctic Circle and their bodies contain the ability to produce these ice binding proteins such as the ocean pout fish. This means that the genetic changes to Bucky Barnes body after the treatment from Hydra gave him the ability to produce these antifreeze proteins, these ice binding proteins which act in the same way as those that you will find in fish. There are researchers working on ways to copy these proteins in laboratories around the world. One group working on this is that of Ilya Wutz at the Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands. And Ilya and her group know a thing or two about ice binding proteins and the Winter Soldier because they've written a paper about exactly that that is featured in the journal Superhero Science and Technology. And if you want to know more about their work, you can read all about it for free in the journal Superhero Science and Technology. And I know quite a bit about this journal because I'm the editor-in-chief of the journal. That's a little bit about the science behind Bucky Barnes and how his body produces ice-binding proteins that prevent the formation of water crystals as his body temperature decreases below zero degrees Celsius. As a result, his body can be frozen or preserved and he doesn't have to worry about ice crystals growing inside his body that could damage his cells permanently. And the work being done by groups like Ilya Wutz's group at the Eindhoven University of Technology might pave the way for the use of these ice binding proteins in lots of different applications but not to freeze people. Instead, if the researchers are able to replicate these proteins in the laboratory, they could be used to help preserve donor organs so that they can be used for a longer period of time. Thanks for watching this video in relation to Bucky Barnes ice binding proteins and the problem with freezing people. While there are companies out there who are trying to freeze people and use cryoprotectants, the best way, the most appropriate way and the most natural way to do it is to turn to ice binding proteins. Of course, I'm not suggesting they should be used to freeze assassins in the future. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist. Stay tuned for more videos in relation to superheroes and science. And until I see you next time, always 
Think super.